National Association of Schoolmasters, MEME. Reminder, Health and Safety Committee meeting today at 3.30 p.m. Safety glasses must be worn when playing conkers at break time. Chris, what are you doing? Well, I was quite worried about this key bag. We best do a risk assessment. Yes. Thank heavens for health and safety. We hear an awful lot of stories about health and safety. From children not being allowed to play conkers at break time, to teachers being banned from giving out plasters when they hurt themselves. But the fact is, these stories are just that. They're myths. Health and safety deals with real issues. Keeping both children and adults safe in their place of work. OK, I think it's time we made a start, everybody. So I'd start off by welcoming you all to the meeting. The function of the Health and Safety Committee is to organise and administrate health and safety legislation within the school. Meeting on a termly cycle, its first job would be to consider the health and safety inspection report that had been prepared by the health and safety reps, together possibly with a member of the school management. So in terms of the report, the feedback that we've had has been very, very positive. The committee would go through that report, analyse it, and then make decisions. They'd prioritise things, set things in order, look at the budgetary requirements and resolve an action plan which would clearly show what had to be done and when it had to be done and even whom should be doing it. That's the vital function of the health and safety role. Agenda items you might expect to see for the uh, health and safety committee could include a variety of different topics. Things such as stress, perhaps asbestos is an issue, slips and trips, they're the kind of issues that would be on the agenda for any Health and Safety Committee meeting. What's coming out is, is that stress is a real issue across the country. And I think one of the things we need to do is, is, is ha take a look at this. Uh, so what I did was is I looked at the Health and Safety Executive website and there they have an audit tool that we can use to do the audit of, um, of stress within the workplace. However, there's no doubt about the problems of stress, but there's equally no doubt that where schools tackle the issue, stress can be reduced. And when stress is reduced, money is saved, targets are achieved, and everybody ends up the happier. As a middle manager in a school, I'm always concerned about the welfare of my team. There are lots of stresses from day to day which can affect their welfare. If I do have any concerns, I can drive them through the health and safety committee within the school. They carry out various um, activities to make sure that we're all feeling well in work. For example, uh, recently they've undertaken an online survey where staff have uh, completed various questions and they've analysed the results to make sure that our working environment is a good working environment. Schools who pursue an active stress policy as devised and developed by the Health and Safety Committee often find that they save an enormous amount of money on staffing, especially in terms of supply cover. And the money they save can be put to far better use in running the school. So in just one issue area alone there, we can see a massive benefit from having such a committee. 
Who would be on a health and safety committee in our school? Well, we'd certainly like to see all of the health and safety trade union reps on that committee. It's vital that they're there and able to represent the members on the committee. We'd like to see the school site manager or the business manager, or maybe in a small school it could be the school caretaker. They should be on the committee because they're going to be involved on a day-to-day -day basis. We'd want to see the governor with responsibilities for health and safety. That's a vital role nowadays. But without doubt, the most important person we want to see on the committee is the person in control. And that, of course, is the head teacher. They and they alone have the final responsibility and say so on health and safety matters in the school. Therefore, it makes sense that they should be a part of any decision-making process within the school that takes place via the committee. Well, I think the Health and Safety Committee is important to me because before it was in existence, working as an ICT teacher, I had 30 kids, 30 PCs, all generating a load of heat. I was getting headaches kids were feeling very, very lethargic. There was no real teacher or learning of any quality going on as a result. Following the reported it as an issue, and now we've got air conditioning and everything in there. It's absolutely fantastic. It's a complete contrast. As an expectant mother working in a design technology department, which is a high-risk area, um, I felt really valued and supported. Um, I've had my risk assessment for pregnancy at the very start of the year and throughout the whole pregnancy I've read regular meetings. Um, there's been a significant number of changes, for example parking close to the school um, in disabled spots, also having um, shared some of my lessons with other members of staff to reduce the physical strain of working in, the de in this department. As the NASUWT rep in the school and also as a science teacher, I raised the issue of the disposal of broken waste gloves from the laboratories. We involved the Health and Safety Committee and through them, good working practices, appropriate working practices were soon established so that we have trained professionals in the school who can dispose of that glass at minimal risk to themselves, to teachers, technicians and pupils, so we're improving the safe working environment of the school. How do we establish a health and safety committee in the school? Very simple, we ask for one. There's so many benefits in a health and safety committee. Explain those benefits to the head teacher, talk about the benefits and simply say, could we have a health and safety committee in our school? For more information and support in helping to establish a health and safety committee in your workplace, we would urge you to look to the websites of both the NAS UWT or the TUC, where you will find lots of help.